Hey everybody, it's Adam from The Army Painter back again with another video tutorial for you today. Our friends at ID Card Project are hosting a Mega Paint Set giveaway, so in honor of that, I figured I'd paint up one of my very own chapter Space Marines for you today. At ID Card Project, they really bring your custom Space Marine chapters to life with really amazing graphics and backstory. So let's take a look at the paints that we're gonna be using for today's tutorial. I hope you like the color mint green and painting checkers because we're gonna be doing quite a bit of that today. So when you're ready, grab some clean water, your wet palette, the paints that you need, and a brush, and let's get started. So here is my captain. I've converted him up from a Games Workshop Lieutenant and some bits that I actually helped design for my friend at Pop Goes the Monkey. That's where this hammer, jump pack, and shield come into play. And I figured that this is a really fun model to start working from. I'd like to begin by applying the first steps with the airbrush. I just apply a couple drops of our airbrush mixing medium, our airbrush medium, in about a one to two parts ratio to our war paints. Now, I start with Elemental Bolt. I'm just going to apply that. I like to apply the thinner first so you don't get any pigments clogging up inside your airbrush. And I'm just going to stir that with an old hobby brush. Rinse that off. And I'm just gonna apply a couple smooth coats all over the model. You just wanna get a nice even coat of this elemental bolt all across the model. Apply just two very thin coats. Allow that first coat to dry before applying a second. Make sure you work its way into all of the nooks and crannies underneath the model as well. haven't quite gotten around to doing this for my elemental bolt, but because I'm painting basically the same colors across the entire army, I like to pre-mix some of my fades, especially for the base tones and when I'm applying highlight. And our empty mixing models are great for that. So inside of here, I have about two parts elemental bolt, one part crack and skin with some airbrush mixing medium, and of course, our mixing balls in there. So it's nice and easy and ready to go. I just have to drop a couple of these into my airbrush and I'm ready to get started applying my first highlights. So for the first highlight, what I like to do with this mix is just apply this from the top down. This is a very gradual highlight. You can see that you could almost barely see it, but I'm aiming this from the top down. You can see I'm, I'm moving the, the model and holding this at an angle. So it makes it very simple for me to pick out the raised areas and highlights with the airbrush. This is also called a Zenithal highlight. here on the shield what I'll do is I'll actually apply this at the bottom portion of the shield. So I'm going to start by applying it here and just slowly fade it with its way into the top of the shield. Just, just a couple slight passes to help build up that color. And now we will apply one final highlight, this time of just pure cracking skin, thin down a little bit with our airbrush medium. And this, I'm gonna apply a little bit more conservatively and focus in on the higher points of the shoulder pads, just the bridge of the nose there, tops of the knees, feet, the bottom of this shield, and of course, just inside the highlight that we applied with our 50-50 mix on that jet pack there. So just very carefully. There you go, and you can see how quick that, that really starts to take place. That highlight is very generous. Don't worry, we are gonna wash this back down a little bit in later stages. If it does look a bit drastic, that's okay. Just very carefully, and like I said, conservatively, go around the model and find the areas that you wanna apply the focal highlights with your airbrush.
Painting freehand in checkers can be a bit daunting at first, but when you use the right brush, in this case, I like to use a character or a detail brush and really thin down paints to give you ultimate control, it's really not as hard as you might think. So before I begin washing down all of the armor on the model, I like to apply any of the freehand that I'm going to on the model. My army likes to have checkers all over its shoulder pads, on its left shoulder pad, and on the characters, I'll apply some to other areas of the model. So I'm gonna show you how you would do that today. I've got some Elemental Bolt, Kraken Skin. Actually, this is a 50-50 mix of Elemental Bolt and Kraken Skin, some pure Kraken Skin, and then some Kraken Skin with a little bit of white, matte white mixed in. So of course, generally I start on the shoulder pad here and our shield is obscuring us just a little bit, but that's okay. I'm gonna show you how I begin applying the base work for all of my checkers. So I'm using a detail brush here and I'm just gonna start tracing some very, very thin lines, vertical lines down the shoulder pad. finding the right angles and I'm being very precise, very careful, but I'm using very thin down paints. I'm just gonna apply these lines as thin as I can, as carefully as I can on the shoulder pad. And these are gonna be our guides for when we paint in the checkers. We'll find a, another area on this model to apply these checkers. It's a little bit easier for you to see. And I think that perfect spot would be the shield. And sometimes I like to just blend in the checkers into the remaining area of the model. So I'm just gonna pull some straight lines here, and just fade them in to the shield like so. Again, I'm using very watered down paints. And it's okay if you can't quite see it here we're gonna go back at that with a slightly lighter tone in a minute. So just basically adding guidelines here, some traced in guidelines for where we will want to apply our checkers. You can see I'm pulling the brush towards me that helps me to achieve as straight a line as possible. It's much harder to paint this way, I'm pulling the lines with my brush towards me. Okay, and I'm gonna stop right there. And you're gonna say, wait, Adam, you're not finished. You're not extending it all the way. It's because I don't want to. I wanna blend this back into the shield. Now, another way to do this is to paint square checkers all the way up and then come back with the airbrush to blend it back down. But I like this approach and I find it actually to be pretty simple and pretty easy, pretty effective. I like just taking my time and applying some freehand every now and then. It really adds to the overall feel of the model, but it doesn't take as long as you might think. Don't let perfection be the enemy of good here. You just wanna get some nice, simple checkers, because once you get this to tabletop view, you're never gonna be able to tell the difference. So now that I've applied that, I'm going right to my Kraken skin and I'm gonna begin blocking in the first checkers that I wanna have painted. And this is very thin down application, very loose wet paints, and I'm just creating a rough square here. And I'll repeat this all over the model, alternating where the checkers will be, obviously. Until I filled in all of the checkers very simply. I call this the goalpost technique. I like to square in on either side, just like that. And then I fill in between the goalposts. And there we have it. There's our roughed in checker. I'm gonna repeat this all over the rest of this shield and the rest of the model. We'll come back for the next steps. So I've gone ahead and added some checkers to the rundle there, to his right kneecap. All of my captains and sergeants, I like to add the checker there. 
If it's units, my unit designation will be a different color there. Got the shoulder pad as best as I could do. It's a tight squeeze to get the brush in there, but I think where the checkers are gonna make the most impact on this model is gonna be on this shield. So now I've got a decent base coat of our Kraken skin in there, and now it's time to go work on blending some of this back in. So I've gone back to my 50-50 mix of Kraken skin and Elemental Bolt, and I'm going to work this into these upper checkers here very subtly. I like to take my time, but it's actually, the more layers that you apply, the more thinner layers, it's gonna end up saving you time in the long run. Because you're just working up these layers ever so subtly. You can see I left just a little bit of that crack in skin on these corners here, just to help give me a guideline as to where I'm gonna be blending in this 50-50 mix. Now in some of these areas, it might be a little bit too dark because we did apply that airbrush gradient and highlight, and we wanna try and match that gradient with the checkers. So you just go right in with your crack and skin, and you kind of blend it in, almost like our wet blending if you were watching our last tutorial. We're just doing a little bit of wet blending on these checkers on the shield, nothing too crazy. And once we're happy with those checkers where they're at, you're gonna go back to your crack and skin and just reestablish the first checkers like so. And then with our 50-50 mix of crack and skin and matte white, we're going to begin applying them to the bottom most, I guess top because we have the model flipped around, but the bottom most parts of the shield just trying to match the gradient that we achieved through the airbrush as best as we can. Wet palette is really a benefit to you here because it keeps those paints nice and loose and you're able to go right back and forth between colors very simply as we're just blending in simple blending techniques on these checkers. I, it is a more advanced technique for sure, but once you get the hang of this, it's actually quite simple to replicate at home. So I'm just gonna repeat this until I have a nice solid gradient from the bottom to the top, working from our matte white Kraken skin mix through to Kraken skin and our 50-50 mix here. And I'll apply this to the shoulder as well as the rundle and the kneecap. So I've gone ahead and I've mixed about one part quick shade blue tone to one part quick shade green tone. And when I'm applying a wash to my model, I like to have a bit of our quick shade wash mixing medium here on the side to help blend in some of the areas if we do wash over it a little bit. So I'm gonna begin applying this all over the model. I will be a little bit more focused in some areas like some of these details here because I don't want to tint down the model too, too much, but I do want to apply some of that nice contrast and shading to these areas of the model. Now areas like here on the shoulder pad, I am going to apply it pretty heavily. And I'll apply some all over the back portion of the shoulder pad matching our initial airbrush gradient. And then I'll take some of that quick shade wash mixing medium and just blend it in to the rest of the shoulder pad like so, because it's a nice gradient there. So I'm just gonna find all of the areas of green armor on the model. I'm gonna continue applying this wash around them in the deeper areas, like behind some of these armored panels, I will just apply a straight wash. I'm gonna work its way into some of the details on the model like so. But then when I get to these finer areas and the flatter panels, like here around the knee pad and the, the shin guard, I just wanna work its way into the recesses. I don't want it to 
tint down the model too, too much. And if I do feel like I've washed it down a little bit too much and I've darkened the model, I can always go back to my quick shade wash mixing medium that's on my wet palette and just help move it away. The quick shade wash mixing medium helps to just blend it out and back away. Areas like here on the, sh on the shield, I'm just gonna apply a recess wash around the border here, which we'll be painting in in a different color later on in the tutorial. Just letting those bristles catch that inner ridge on the shield, like so. This next step is actually very simple. Before I begin to finish off the rest of the highlighting on the armor, I like to go in and there's just a few details that I like to pick out first. And this little piece of the inner suit, this rubber housing, I like a very simple approach. What I'm doing here is I've got a bit of hardened carapace. I'm gonna apply one smooth coat to it. And I'm just gonna paint in the bottom half, maybe bottom two thirds like so. I'll flip the model over and then I've got my dungeon gray and I'm gonna apply this from the top down. And I'm just gonna very quickly blend these two together for a very simple highlight. This is one simple way to get just a, a nice effect, a nice added element without spending too much time. I don't like to highlight these little areas. So I've got that nice simple blend. I'm gonna let that dry and come back and I will wash it down with quick shade dark tone for just a very simple and realistic gradient on the model. So you wanna find all of the areas like here behind the knee and this knee here and any of the areas like here where you see that rubber housing poking through. Very simply, just apply your hardened carapace like so grab some of that dungeon gray and apply a little bit to the top half, top third of it and blend it back together. Once you've got those very simple blends applied to that inner housing, you're just gonna take a bit of quick shade dark tone and just very carefully apply this to it. You wanna make sure that you don't get any of this wash onto your green armor. Just go ahead around the model and apply this wash into those recesses for a very simple inner housing effect. Now I'm just going to paint in the lenses of the eye and I've got just a little bit of lava orange here very carefully and I'm just gonna try and find its way into the little recesses of these lenses as best I can. Just very simply like so. And I'll turn the model around. I've got that hammer in the way for you guys, I'm sorry. And then just apply a little bit on the other side as well. And what you're gonna do is take a bit of demonic yellow, again with your detail brush. And you could use an insane detail brush here if you want to but I'm, I'm pretty okay with just using the detail brush for a lot of these detail works. I'm just gonna apply a little bit of that demonic yellow towards the center of the lens. Once that's dried, I'm just going to apply a little bit of quick shade red tone to the lenses of the eye, just to blend our orange and red back together. Now we can move on to finishing off all of the highlighting around the model. I'm gonna start with our 50-50 mix of Kraken Skin and Elemental Bolt, and I'm gonna apply my first highlight. And this is going to catch as many of the hard edges on the model as possible. So just very carefully, I am using my detail brush once again. Character brush is also great for this, but there's a lot of fine details, so I just wanna to stick to a slightly smaller brush head. And our detail brush does hold paint for quite a while making it very good for applying these edge highlights. So I'm gonna go around the model and find those areas. I'm gonna catch all of them like the tip of the knee pad here. And any of the hard edges around the model. I like to highlight the underside of the knee pad like so, fully all the way around 
with this first application, this first highlight. It's okay if it gets a little bit chunky. In some areas, I do call this the chunky highlight because we are going to be coming back and refining this highlight later with slightly brighter tones. In some areas, like right here, you can just take the edge of your brush and apply that simple highlight. So go ahead around all of the model, find all of the details that you want to apply a highlight to with this 50-50 mix of crack and skin and elemental bolt. Take your time. This is the most interesting aspect of the model. You know, the majority of it is this turquoise teal color that we are painting in. So you do want to spend your time, make sure that it looks nice and clean until you're ready to dirty up with some weathering later. With our first round of highlights complete, it's time to move on to our next round. For this, we've got pure crack and skin, and I'm just gonna find the same areas that we previously highlighted with our chunky highlight, our first highlight of 50-50 mix of Elemental Bolt and crack and skin. I'm just gonna apply pure crack and skin to the inside of those highlights and just to push the more extreme areas and edges on the model. So you're being even more conservative with this application and you're just gonna apply very lightly using thin down paints that next round of highlights. Make sure that your paint is nice and fluid. The wet palette really helps out a great deal here. You can use the edge of your brush on some of these hard angled edges like so. And you can see where our first highlight tends to blend in in the center areas where we applied our airbrush highlights. So this final highlight, this next highlight of pure crack and skin helps to blend our brush highlights into the airbrush highlights a little bit better and gives it a very realistic appearance. So go around the model, find the areas that you've previously highlighted and go ahead and just pick out those areas with your pure crack and skin. I've already started highlighting the model this time with a more focused highlight of crack and skin. Now with this application, we want to find just the most extreme areas. This part of this helmet is actually a really good example. I'm just using it to pick out the hardest edges on the model. Now, some of the areas across the model, you can see where our original base tones through the airbrush kind of blend into that chunky highlight, that first highlight that we applied, which is nice because when you get to the more extreme areas, the darker areas, that application, you can see that highlight, but in the more extreme areas here, it just kind of blends in. And this is where you're going to want to apply that highlight of crack and skin. Now, if you're painting, I don't know, ultramarines, your first highlight after basing your model in ultramarine blue might be void shield blue or it might even be fog gray depending on which way you're going with it but whatever it is you want to concentrate your next round of highlights just inside and at the most extreme hard edges so just inside of what you've previously highlighted All right, now we are just about finished with the highlights. I'm taking some pure matte white and I'm just gonna apply some dots on the model. And these are just little reflection points. It's a very simple way to just kind of push the, the contrast and visual interest on the model. So what I do is I just find little areas on the model and I kind of follow a line as if the light is reflecting from that point. So I might put one right here right there and like that just like so and then I'm gonna pick also the most raised areas just the peaks these little corners here with the pure matte white areas like here and some of these rivets like so the corners of the shoulder pads very simple and it gives a nice added element to your finished model Right now I'm gonna go across the model and just find some areas that I want to you know, add some weathering to. So I'll just find some areas on the model that I find are interesting and where I think that some chipping in the armor might happen. So I'm just taking a little bit of our highlight colors and I'm going around the model and just applying some areas 
on it where I can apply some chipping and weathering. So I'm being pretty sporadic here and a little bit conservative. I want to add a couple areas, of course, on the shield, right? Because if anywhere on this model is going to get dinged up and beaten down, it would probably be this shield. And you can see I'm not making uniform shapes when I'm applying this highlight color to the model. I'm just finding some interesting ways and I'm moving my brush around somewhat sporadically just to add a realistic chipping effect. Once those areas have had time to dry, I'm just gonna take a little bit of dirt spatter and this is a nice brown tone. You could use a metallic color here if you wanted to, but I like this brown tone as it really complements the bright minty green of the Kraken skin and elemental bolt. And I'm just gonna apply this inside all of the areas that I applied that little you know, bit of weathering with our highlight colors. And this gives a really realistic three-dimensional effect with very, very little effort. So just take your time, be very patient here, and go ahead and paint that dirt spatter inside of those areas on the model. This is my recipe for chipping. Some people like to do the sponge effect. I find this to be just a tad bit more controlled. That's why I like to employ this on my Fists of Delphi. And now we're gonna move on to painting this piece of cloth that he's wearing, this little bit of robe. And I wasn't sure what I wanted to paint it. I didn't wanna to go too bright here because I like for this bright, vibrant armor to kind of speak for itself. So I figured I'd play with some complementary colors. So I'm using a bit of Wizard's Orb mixed with some of our matte black, just to keep some of that minty green, that teal turquoise tone. This does look a bit grayish and that's okay. So I'm gonna apply this first. It's just a nice simple base tone to all of the cloth, this tunic robe that he's wearing. So just get one nice smooth, even coat. Two thin coats should do. You might even be able to get away with just one thin coat since we're applying this right over top a very similar color with darker pigment. Now what I'm gonna to begin to do is just ever so slowly work in some of some more of that wizard's orb into our mix of wizard's orb and matte black. And I'm just gonna to begin to work in these highlights before I apply a wash because I want to just have a very natural blend. And you see how wet and loose the paints are as I'm doing this blending. That's on purpose. We don't wanna glob this paint up. We don't want to obscure any of the details because we want those details to really jump out after we apply the wash. And if we apply too much paint, it won't be able to do that because the paint's gonna fill up those details. So very thin down paints as we're working these blends just to preserve all of the detail of the model. Now we're just gonna apply some quick shade strong tone right over top of all of the areas that we previously applied that mixture of Wizard's Orb and Matte Black too. Just go ahead and work its way into the recesses, into the folds, and we'll come back after it's had some time to dry, and we're just gonna reinforce some of the highlights on this robe. I've given that wash some time to dry, and I'm going to straight Wizard's Orb, and I'm just gonna apply this on the folds that we left highlighted from our previous blending, just to really bring it back to that turquoise. I'll just pick out the raised ridges by applying our quick shade dark tone. It really allowed us to see the detail and the contrast on this area of the model. So we're just painting inside the lines that the wash has provided for us very simply. Now on the handle of the hammer here, you can just go ahead and pick out some of the grips that he has here. I don't know what this is made out of. You don't have to. If you want to save some time, you apply to wash, you had a nice blend underneath, that's just fine. But it's very simple to just go ahead and apply a couple little accents to these details on the model. Then I'll just take a little bit of our elemental bolt and I'll apply a very simple highlight here 
And this really ties the two different colors together as this was the base tone for the rest of the model. And now we're using it as a highlight on these darker turquoise parts on the model. Just very carefully pick out the areas that you want to highlight, like the bottoms of the cloaks here. You might want to find this inner line here where the creases meet and apply just a little bit of that elemental bolt there to it. And then the underside of these robes here, as well as these little ridges on the hammer grip here. Now you can use either brush on gray primer or dungeon gray here. I did go ahead with brush on primer because I chipped off some of the paint that I had originally airbrushed on on the hammer. That's pretty common with 3D printed models because of the resin if you haven't cleaned it enough. So I'm just using the same paint here, but if you don't need the primer or don't have it, just go ahead and use something like Dungeon Gray. And I've thinned this down, I'm just gonna very carefully apply this to this chest eagle on the model. Now I'm just gonna apply a second coat of gray, this time ash gray, which is a much brighter gray. When I'm painting up and working up to whites, I like to work in very thin coats with a base tone, mid tone, and then our final white tone before applying a wash. And ash gray is perfect for that. I have thinned down matte white on my wet palette. I'm just gonna apply this all over the chest eagle on this model. Now, if you have some of those grays in the recesses, that's okay. That's why we do it in this three-step process. So I'm just gonna apply a very thin application of matte white. Just one coat should do, but if you feel like you've thinned it down a little bit too much and want to apply a second one, go ahead. When applying a wash to white, I like to use just a very little bit of quick shade dark tone, about one drop to somewhere around seven or eight drops of quick shade wash mixing medium. This gives us a nice gray wash that we can apply over white. And once the wash is dried, I'm gonna go back to my matte white and I'm just gonna pick out the most raised details on this model. So the edges of this chest eagle, the wings of the chest here, the nose of the skull, and then of course, just the very tips of the feathers on the wings. I'm being very careful here and using a detail brush and I'm just pulling very small, bright white highlights. Then I add a little bit of quick shade blue tone to our original wash mixture and I'm just gonna apply this into the folds and recesses of the wings just to add a little bit more definition. All right, now I'm gonna begin painting in all of the bony areas and the parchment on this model, like these parchment pieces here on the purity seal. I'm also going to use skeleton bone as a base coat for the reds that we're going to do later on. So if you're painting red on the purity seal like here, I'm just going to apply skeleton bone because this gives a nice solid base tone to paint reds over top of. Go ahead and grab some quick shade soft tone. I love this when working with bony colors. It's a nice soft brown tone. I'm going to apply this to all of the bone areas on the model, including the parchment pieces of the purity seals, like here. And I'm just gonna run this. I do wanna tint it down just a little bit because we are gonna come back and highlight this again with our skeleton bone. And as you can see when I'm applying this, I'm making sure that I get this to work its way into the recesses and I'll come back with my brush just move it around because I don't want the pigments to settle too darkly into the recesses. You just want a little bit of that pigment to sit there. On areas like here on the skull, I'm gonna apply this around the top of the skull because I want some of that wash to be in between our green armor and the skeleton bone. Now we're going back to skeleton bone and I'm just gonna apply a very thin application. I'm leaving some of the wash in the folds of this purity seal 
And then I'm just gonna work up a very thin application, a nice blend of skeleton bone. And in some areas, I'll just focus this on the hard corners and edges with a simple edge highlight like here. I've got a bit of arid earth on my wet palette and I love using this color to highlight up skeleton bone for paper and parchment and cloth. And I'm just gonna find the most raised hard edges on all of these purity seals and just add a very simple line highlight. I'm just pulling a very simple line and then I'll do a simple edge highlight here on the side. Going back to my palette to get a little bit more paint on my brush. And I'm just gonna focus on the most extreme edges, as you can see on this purity seal. I'm gonna flip the model around and I'd like to just start by tracing in the hard lines and then I'll go back and connect them with an edge highlight using the edge of my brush. With all the parchment complete, I'm just applying a simple base coat of Mars Red to all of the purity seals and any areas that I want to paint red. I like using Mars Red because this is a bright orange shade red that when I apply a wash in later stages, it'll tone it back down to a more neutral red. Mars Red has great coverage for a red paint. I love using it for this application. When that's dried, I'm just gonna apply a very simple wash using quick shade red tone just to bring out the reds and find the recesses and add shading to these areas. I'll come back with Mars Red and just pick out the highlights. I'm just applying a little dot to the center of the purity seals and then around the raised areas, leaving some of the wash tones to still exist. It gives a nice blend from that deeper, richer red to that brighter, more orange shade red. Now we're gonna apply a final highlight, and for this I'm using Lava Orange. Now, if you don't have an orange paint, or if you like to just go to your palette, you can just mix in a bit of that skeleton bone with your Mars Red for a nice seamless highlight tone for these purity seals, but fortunately I do have Lava Orange, and I like using this color as it adds a even more extreme contrast to that deeper wash down red between Mars Red and that. We're just picking out just small dots and small edges around these purity seals. We're not going overboard. We don't want this to appear orange, just a nicely highlighted red. Now we're at the point where I like to start working on the base of the model. That's Typically, I like to do this before I begin working on any of the metallics or any other special effects I want to do. And this gives me a nice completion point because I feel like I could put this on the table today and be happy with it, come back and finish it later. I've reapplied some of our brush on gray primer to the stones of the base, and now I'm just taking some werewolf fur and I've watered it down so it works its way into all of the nooks and crannies and the recesses of the base. I used my standard basing technique where I take a little bit of PVA glue and some paint and I just mix in some of our snow basing material to give it that nice rough texture. And once that's a tone dry, I like to add a just very simple dry brush of skeleton bone. I know you usually dry brush after you wash the model, but I like doing this because when I'm painting a large army and usually I'm painting 10 or 20 models at a time, I need to speed up somewhere and this saves me a lot of time. So I apply the dry brush now. It's very simple and I'll apply the wash next. And like I said previously, I'm just gonna apply a wash and I apply this wash all over the rocks and of course the brown areas on the base, the ground areas of the base. And I'm just gonna apply a very liberal wash. I take a little bit of water from my mixing jar, my cleaning jar, my rinsing jar and I just mix that in with the paint as I go. So I'm just applying this quick shade strong tone all over the base of the model. Give it about 15, 20 minutes to dry before you move on to the next step. Now the wash is dried, I'm going back to Dungeon Gray, which is a very similar color to our brush on gray primer. And I'm just gonna add a very simple dry brush highlight to the rocks on the base. Just very simply here, very little paint on the brush I'm just going to reestablish some of that base gray tone. And then using ash gray, I'm going to apply a final highlight and you can see I'm just being a little bit more focused. 
and a little bit more precise with this highlight and this dry brush. I just want to pick the most raised areas of the rocks. And this is the final step for my basing. I'll paint the rim in black when I'm done with the project and add a few of the tufts that I like to use. I like to use our Battlefields Basing Deadland Tufts with a mix of our mountain or sometimes highland tufts. Just very simply with very dry bristles on your hobby dry brush or your Wargamer dry brush, go ahead and apply a very simple dry brush of ash gray to all of these rocks. Now I'm going to move on to painting all of the leather areas on the model. And for this, I'm using oak brown. This is a nice, rich, dark brown. And I'm just going to apply this as a base coat in one or two very thin coats. I've watered this down on my wet palette. And I just want to apply a nice, smooth application to this to the belt and, of course, the gun holster. Now that's dry, I'm going to apply our quick shade strong tone just all over the areas that we just based in oak brown. Just apply a nice smooth layer of this over top and allow the pigments of the wash to work its way into the recesses. And give it a little bit of time to dry and we'll come back and start working on our highlights. So I've added some fur brown and some tanned flesh to my palette here and I'm just gonna add just a quick highlight of our oak brown just like that. Just very thin application, very watered down paints. And then I'll go to a 50-50 mix of our oak brown and our fur brown, and I'll just begin applying that to the bottom of this gun holster here. And I'm just gonna work up a very simple highlight, just like so. Nothing too crazy, nothing too drastic, just enough. Then I'll go straight to my pure fur brown and I'll begin applying just a simple edge highlight to all of the leather bits on the model like so. And then I'll take some of that tanned flesh and I'll just pick out a few dots and spots to really give it that worn leather appearance. So we're gonna put our wet palette back to work again. This time we're gonna be painting up the uh, hammerhead here and of course this I'm not even sure what you call it, sword holster, I guess. I, I, I'm kind of embarrassed to admit that I don't know what this is called. But um, starting with some alien purple, I don't use purple in this army a lot, and I know I, I probably should. It's a really nice complementary color to this crack and skin and elemental bolt combination that we have going on. But I wanted to make him stand out and look a little bit unique. And a couple weeks ago, I asked, what color should I paint a power sword in our... Dark Angels Deathwing Captain tutorial, and one of the options that got a big response was purple. Uh, they wanted to see a purple power sword, so I'm going to try and emulate some of those effects here today. I'm just giving a nice, simple base tone of alien purple to the areas that I want to be painted purple, and we're going to be doing some wet blending again. It's funny how once you start using a wet palette, you really pushes you to start trying out these new techniques. And this is one that I've not tried on a hammer before, but we're gonna try it today. So I'm just gonna try and get a smooth coat. I'm not worried about this little emblem in the middle. I'm gonna just paint that a true metallic in a bit, but I want to paint these purple bits first. So for today, I'm just going to focus on this part of the hammer here and course the sword just to show off some of the blends and what I would do. So we've got that nice simple coat of alien purple working. I also have some matte black on my palette. I also have some oozing purple and I have some matte white and some mixtures in between. So what I'm going to start with is a mixture of matte black and alien purple and I'm just going to work this into the upper portion of this sword handle, sword holster here. 
and then I'll go back to my alien purple and just work its way in there. On this hammerhead here, I'm gonna do kind of the reverse. I'm gonna do the shadow up top, like so. And this is our 50-50 mix of matte black and alien purple. And then I've got a mix of our alien purple and oozing purple that I'm gonna to apply to the bottom half here. And what happens is that these two should eventually meet in the middle, like so. And when they do, we go back to our pure alien purple and just try and blend them together. We're going to do this back and forth until we're happy with our result. It's looking a little bit dark. That's okay. We'll come back to it. On this side of the sheath, is that what it's called? A sword sheath. I'm going to apply our darker mix down there. And then our brighter up closer. And that just gives us a nice alternative perspective. It's a shifting light. We'll have the darker here on this side while the lighter up top. So I'm just going to take my time and work these colors in and go back and forth, back and forth. And like I said about time management, when I'm trying to get things done and looking good on the tabletop, there's certain areas that I choose that I want to focus on for my army and other areas that I'm okay spending a little bit less time on. This is one of those areas that I want to spend a bit more time on because I think it's something that will have an impressive effect for my opponents and people walking by if I'm at a tournament or just at my local game store. So all I'm doing is going back and forth in between the colors that I have on my wet palette and working my way from my bright tone to my mid tone to my dark tone here. Now you don't necessarily need to use colors like matte black and matte white to pull off this effect. It's just what I chose to do today for this color. You could shift this even closer to purple if you wanted to, or pink, excuse me, by working with some pink tones. But I want to go with a nice, rich, dark purple. So there's no rhyme or reason here. I can't say that, you know, you need to apply five coats here, six coats there. You just got to work your way back and forth with this until your eyes are happy. This is a slightly more advanced technique for sure, but it's really not that hard to do. I think that this is a technique that's intimidating to a lot of people. It was intimidating to me for a long time until I actually sat down and tried it. And you can really see there on that sheath where the effect is starting to take shape going to want to go ahead and just apply a little bit more of our oozing purple up here and really push the contrast now. So I'm just slowly working brighter as I go. Once I get to a point where I have my darker colors and my bright colors almost meeting in the middle, I go back to our alien purple and I blend it back down, blend it back up very simply like so. So I'm going to go back to the hammerhead now and I've got my oozing purple. I'm just going to apply this at the very bottom and work its way into the top of the hammerhead. I'm going to do this to both sides. Then 
then I'll go ahead back to my 50-50 mix with Alien Purple and Matte Black just to reinforce that hard edge and that darker edge. Give my brush a quick rinse and then I go to my Alien Purple just like so. You almost get a mirrored effect happening here. So I'm going to go about just applying these tones and just working these gradients until I find a point that I'm happy with across these areas of the model. And then we'll come back and I'm going to show you how I'm going to highlight them. So here's how we're looking on this hammer and of course this sheath to his sword. So now I've just got some pure oozing purple and I'm just going to pull a very simple highlight down the edge here. Then I've got a little bit of oozing purple mixed in with some matte white. And I'm just going to pull a slightly brighter highlight at the brightest point on this sheath, just like so. I'll repeat that on all of the sides of the sheath there. And I'm going to do the same thing around all of these reflection points on <clears throat> this hammer. So just a very slight faint line of oozing purple, just very subtly, very careful. Take your time here. This is almost unnecessary to pull off this effect if you've done a good enough job, but just adding these little extra highlights really helps refine the edges and all of the hard work trying to make this reflective hammer appearance. So now I've got a little bit of that 50-50 mix and very carefully here just gonna pull that highlight there we go this is certainly a more advanced technique you can go ahead and skip this if you want to and just apply a simple dry brush but I wanted to showcase just a slightly new technique this is a little bit new to me and I like how it turned out here we are our hammer and the sheath are complete. I'm going to go ahead and begin painting up all of the metallics and I'm going to use for the first time I've not used this on my army yet. I'm going to use a bit of our new evil chrome. This is a nice light brassy bronze color. So I'm just going to paint in some of the details in this evil chrome just very simply like the inside of this little ornament that he's got going on there and then I'm also going to paint it on the outside of this crucifix or cross that he has. I'm just going to apply it just two thin coats to those areas as well as his halo that he's wearing here. I'm just going to take my time applying this. I would rather get just two very thin coats as opposed to applying one thick coat. So just find the areas that you want to be this subtle gold on the model and go ahead and go about just applying this evil chrome. If you don't have evil chrome at home, you could take something like our rough iron or weapon bronze and just mix it with a bit of plate mail metal to get a very similar effect. But I really like this color. Just very simply go about the model, find the areas that you want to be in this gold color and just apply one or two very thin coats. Once that evil chrome has had time to dry, I'm just going to give it a wash with our quick shade strong tone. Now I'm trying this out. I have not used strong tone in combination with this color just yet. I think that you could also use something like our flesh wash, which is really great for golds because it has a little bit of a red hue to it. But I'm going to use the strong tone now just to darken it down a little bit. So find all the areas, make sure you apply this wash. Let it work its way into the recesses on these areas here where the two colors meet. You know, I just want a little bit of that wash to kind of settle in between. It gives some nice separation between the gold and that dark green handle. So just take your time here, go around all of these evil chrome areas, or if you made your own mixture or any kind of gold, just go ahead and apply this wash very carefully to all of these areas. So I changed my mind. I think I'm going to add just a simple highlight of 
bright gold to all of these areas just to shift it a little bit more towards gold. So I'm just applying a very simple, very subtle highlight of bright gold to some of these areas. And we'll come back and apply another highlight after we're done painting in the rest of the metallics. It's just very simply, I'm not being too discerning here. I'm just finding areas that I think would look good with a little touch of this brighter yellow metallic, this brighter gold metallic. I've got a little bit of our War Paints gum metal, and I'm gonna go ahead and find the rest of the metallic areas on the model. Just apply a very simple base coat, like the belt buckle here and the tip of the belt there. Just be careful not to get this on any of the areas that you've previously painted. You don't wanna undo any of your hard work. Just very carefully, I am using a character brush, but for some of these small areas, you might find that detail brush might be a little bit better, but I find the character brush to be really good for most circumstances. We're also going to apply this to some other areas on the model. You see that we didn't pay any attention to these little pieces of the armor. I know that some people paint them in the same color as the rest of the marine armor. I like to paint them in metallics just to you know, add some separation, a little bit of differentiation across the model. Just very simply, very smooth coat. And don't forget on this jump pack, I love this jump pack from Pop Goes the Monkey. It's very unique, very different. And I love that I can add it to anything that I want to be a jump pack model in my army. So just get all the mechanic pieces of this jump pack with that gun metal. Before you finish, make sure you go over the model. Make sure you didn't miss any of the details. This one I almost forgot about, so I'm just very carefully going to apply that very simple base coat. One coat should do you just fine here across all of these subtle details on the model. With all of our gunmetal finished on the model, I'm just going to apply a very simple wash of quick shade dark tone. Just want to allow this to just slightly tint the model and all the metallic areas on the model and work its way into the recesses. Just a very thin application on most areas, but the areas where there's a lot of detail, you want to apply the wash just a little bit more liberally to allow it to work its way into the recesses for some very simple contrast and shading. Just go about applying this to all of the areas that you previously painted in War Paints Gun Metal. Give it some time to dry and we'll come back and apply the final highlights to the rest of the model. We're nearing the final stages. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learning how I paint my own custom chapter, the Fist Adelphi. Many thanks to ID Card Project for participating in the giveaway contest that we're running on their Instagram page. You should certainly check it out. There's loads of inspiration from hobbyists just like you and me to have their own custom chapters and colors and stories and backgrounds. Now I'm going back to gun metal and I'm just gonna pick out the highlights on these models and just reestablish some of them. So in some areas I will just block in the whole thing like there. And then I'll just feather in leaving some of that tinted down gunmetal after the wash just to sit untouched. It's really exciting now because we are in the home stretch, the final highlight that we're going to apply to this model. We've got shining silver, and I'm just going to take a little bit of this and apply it just to the corners on all of the gold metallics, as well as the gunmetal metallics on this model. Just to add a spot of brightness to them. Just very conservative here, just a little bit, just like that. Similar to how we applied the white highlights to the armor now, on the shield here, I am gonna apply an actual strong edge highlight all around the shield, like so. And on these corners, 
where we did that little bit of blending, I'll just apply a little dab there to really bring out the three-dimensionality of this giant sword. Just very carefully go across the entire model, pick out the areas that we've painted in metal, our gold medals as well as our silver medals, and just apply a very simple final highlight of shining silver. Just like so on the tip of this sheath, like that. And of course the edges of jetpack exhausts, the edges around all of the gold on the hammer. And I won't want to forget this crown, so I'll just apply a little bit to the tips of the halo here. I'm going to turn it around, and just in the very inside where we painted in gold, I'm just going to apply a little bit of that shining silver just like that. It's a really nice effect. I do hope you enjoyed this tutorial and enjoyed my recipe for painting my custom chapter, the Fists of Delphi. Be sure to head on over to ID Card Project to see other people's custom chapters and artwork. And stay tuned, there might be another giveaway happening between the Army Painter and ID Card Project. Who doesn't love a giveaway? So when I'm finished applying this highlight of Shining Silver to the model, I'll just finish off the base by applying my favorite tufts. I like to use Deadland Tuft and Highland Tuft. Sometimes I'll mix in a Mountain Tuft here or there. I like the combination of the bluish green and the brighter yellow of the two tufts. It gives a really nice effect and looks very strong and cohesive when I apply that all over the models in the entirety of my army. So we're just about done here. Just going to apply a couple more simple highlights to these gold bits, like so. And some rough highlights on the metallic areas here. And of course on the gold that we painted on the hammer, just very simply, it's a nice realistic reflective metal appearance in just very simple steps doesn't take a total ton of skill to pull this off. I could be more precise if I want to, but A, I'm very excited to finish this model, and uh, B, you know, what I like to focus on when I'm painting my army is really nailing the bright colors that are gonna draw your eye. So I'm not too concerned how tight the metallics look. You could even add just a subtle dry brush to them, because what I really want and where I really want to spend my time is on that green armor, that turquoise armor, and any of the purple, the glowing areas of the model. But to each their own, if you want to go ahead and really spend your time honing in these details on the metallics, by all means, that's 100% up to you. But this is just how I do my army. I probably own seven, probably eight, now nine, with this one, painted Space Marine Captains. They are my favorite model to paint after all. I really like how this turned out. I love how the bright mint green armor pairs against the darker green robes. And of course, the checkers and all of the weathering is really fun to work on. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I enjoyed painting this model for you today. Remember that you can find all of the paints that we use in today's tutorial from your friendly local game store, your favorite online retailer such as Amazon, or at www.thearmypainter.com. Remember the magic in miniature painting is that it can be as simple or as challenging as you'd like it to be. With the right techniques, you're sure to achieve some great results. We'll see you next time.